time. Believe it or not, we're now down to only eight contenders. And tonight, four of them are going to be fighting their little hearts out for a place in our grand final. That's right, and now they really have to dig down deep from within. Because at stake is £14,000 worth of prize money. £5,000 cash each. <laughs> a holiday for two at the Atlantis Holiday Complex on Paradise Island in the Bahamas. <laughs> Plus, one of these fabulous four-wheel drive off-the-road family vehicles. Meet our semi finalists tonight. They are Kathy O'Dell and Janet Allen. Come on, girls. Welcome back, Kathy. Our baker from Hull. <laughs> Welcome back. How does it feel to be back? Oh, it feels absolutely wonderful. I'm really surprised I've got this far. It's a really big bonus for me, this. Yes, because I remember you saying, actually, that, you know, if you lose, you lose, but if you win, you'll hug the winner. Now, I want to know, if at the end of this evening you don't win, will you still have enough charity within yourself to hug the winner? I will indeed. Every credit to the winner. Well, you've been smiling throughout, and you were so happy in the quarterfinals. Do you still feel sort of uh, enthusiastic about it, or are things getting a bit more serious? Um, I do feel enthusiastic, but with it being the semi-finals, I feel a little bit pressured, but I'm still going to keep smiling. And it's great to have got this far. Let's hear it for Cathy O'Dell. Now, Janet, tell us, what have you been doing since the last show? I've been training hard, working hard, all that kind of thing. Remind everybody back home, what do you do for a living? I'm a sports development officer for, uh, for Bristol City Council. Brought any of your supporters with you? Yes, I certainly have them all over there. Yeah, thousands and thousands of them, nice to see. And how do you think you're going to get on today? Well, it's going to be a tough match, but I'm going to do my best. Well, at least you know what to expect. Yes, I do. It's going to be hard, but I hope I win. Good. Off you go. Get yourself ready. Janet Allen! Semi-finalists, they are Regan Pilkington and Brian Richardson. <laughs> Regan, welcome. Now, uh, I know you're from the centre of the universe, is that right? Yeah, that's right. I'm from Bolton. <laughs> well, two people from Bolton here too. Looks like Bolton's in uh, Birmingham today. It certainly looks like it. Now, when I met you in the heats, you were very nervous. And we got to the quarters and you said, I'm going to start enjoying myself now. How are you feeling now that you're in the semi-final? Uh, still nervous, but I am trying to enjoy it, so a bit of both there. <laughs> and things are getting more serious, there's no doubt about it. Have you given any thought to the prize money or don't you think that far ahead? You try not to, but you can't help it really. They're beautiful, aren't they? Yes, the cars, the vehicles are fabulous and there's £5,000 in cash. Have you got any thoughts as to how you might spend it? I'm just going to go mad on it. I'm, I'm going to blow it. Well, it sounds good to me. Let's hear it for Regan Pilkington. Now, Brian, you've been away somewhere quite far away, haven't you? Uh, that's right, yeah. Just recently, I've been uh, off the coast of Bosnia on Her Majesty's Aircraft Carrier Invincible. Great stuff. Any of the guys in today? Um, one or two of them are here in the crowd, yeah. Yep. Just tell us, what do you do for a living? I'm a Chief Physical Training Instructor uh, in the Royal Navy. Okay. Uh, yes, they're all here. Since, since the last show, now you know the shows, you know all the events, have you had to do any different training? Um, the training on board is different in its own right anyway, because you're a bit restricted because uh, trying to get on, on the deck is difficult with the, the aircraft going on and off. But uh, yes, I've managed to get quite a few bits and pieces done, a few strengtheners. And are you ready? I am ready! Brian, off you go. Brian Richardson! should be ready for their first event, so here it is. And moving into our first event, and using the blue balls, is Janet! And using the red, is Kathy! And guarding those baskets, is Lightning, Vogue and Falcon! Thrilling threesome, if ever there was. Yes. 
Well, they certainly give the Baywatch babes a run for their money. Three, two, one. Let's play ball. Janet slips Falcon. See you later, Gladiator. Both there for the intercept. Janet spins her out, but it won't count. She steps out of bounds. Kathy reloads. Falcon's there on the ankle like a man trap on her leg. And Kathy quits. Kathy O'Dell won previous outing in Powerball but failed to score. Reloads. Oh, Lightning barges her, shoves her, drags her down. Janet with space. Puts the pudding for two. Janet very fast on her feet. Kathy again. Falcon. Oh, she's lost her. Kathy with a free run for three. Centre basket. Thank you. Kathy in the points and straight into trouble. Lightning storms in. Janet, Bogues there. Falcon teams up for the takedown. Kathy can't get the better of Falcon this time. Janet scored seven Powerball points in her quarter-final. Looks like the Gladiators have closed her down this time. Oh, she slips one Gladiator and slam dunks it over for two right on the whistle. Excellent performance from Janet, snatching the lead right at the end, and she would have scored more. In the replay, we can clearly see she just steps out of bounds before outspinning Vogue and dunking the donut. Well done, Janet. You made that. You always had two gladiators on you. Did you know that? Yeah, I had them in the last show. I knew I'd get it in this show as well. That's because they know you're good. That's right. <laughs> well done. You got yourself your four points. <laughs> Kathy. You were lucky, you only had one gladiator, but it's still hard work. It's very tough. I'm out of breath. How hard do they hit you? It's not that they hit you, it's how good fall. They just got down with a foot. Well done, you got yourself three points. Well done. Kathy O'Dell, go like uh, something or other anyway, and she did after one event, she stands on three while Janet's on four. So, moving straight into the men's event. And using the blue balls, it's Brian! <laughs> and on the red, it's Regan! <laughs> and guarding those baskets is our gladiators, Hunter, Warrior and Rhino! And this is the meat the guys have got to beat. Over to John Anderson. Contenders, ready! If you're looking for trouble, you came to the right place. Three, two, one. Regan in red. Rhino takes a flyer, but Regan's off the mark. Dunks it in the spare basket, makes it look easy. Hunter steams in and grinds him down. Brian with Rhino. Warrior gets it done, no messing. Regan reloads. Rhino marks him out, and Regan backs out. Brian bounced all to the ground by Hunter. Regan again. Hunter's there. Oh, he slipped it under Hunter's nose. Brian short chased by Rhino. Regan steams in, gets the Rhino treatment as well. Regan scored just two Powerball points in his heat. Here's Brian. Amazing. Sells Warrior. Perfect dummy, but can't make it pay. Brian again, straight into Rhino. Never scored in this event, by the way, so trying anything. Regan muscled out there. Navy man Brian dragged to the deck by Hunter. Regan again. Dummies one way, then the other. Nothing to show for it, but a face full of match. Excellent powerball event for the Gladiators. Hard and sporting. Well done, Regan. Hard work. Oh, yeah. Good game, Matt. You knew what to expect? Oh, yeah, I've had it once before, and it's tough, Matt. Well done. You've got yourself four points. <laughs> Brian. You knew it was going to be tough. Yeah, big lads. I bet you don't play this game on the ships, do you? <laughs> Not as rough as this, no. no. Brian, just talk us through that dummy. You actually, what do you do? You threw the ball up in the air. Where are you going to go the other side? I thought, uh, if you can't go through them, go over them. So I threw it in the air. I thought, if I keep an eye on it, one eye on them, one eye on the ball, catch it, put it in the pod. Did it work? No, it didn't. Oh. No points. Let's hear it, Brian. Again, great performance. Yeah, Warrior and I feel a bit like the Bionic Man here with all our strapping, but uh, we've got a lot of beef on the team and I think we hit them pretty hard. Great stuff. Thanks, Hunter. 
Warrior, all this armor, it looks like, protective gear. Tell us, why do you wear all this stuff? Well, John, in all the games we play, we all have to wear elbow pads, knee pads, helmets, and gum shield. And you know, when you get to my age, I'm 25 now, uh, you need a little bit more strapping. I've got a bad shoulder, so has he. And we have to uh, make sure that we're uh, well protected because the way the nature of these games go, uh, one little injury and you can miss three or four shows. So it's better to be safe than sorry. Great stuff, thanks. Rhino, low scoring game again. Well done, guys. Oh, brilliant. We're getting it together now. Um, we love it. We just listen to Warrior. He takes us through the game. I wish the game was longer. Thanks very much. Let's hear from our gladiators. Hunter, Rhino, and the mighty Warrior. The guys are out in force tonight, and so are the fans. After one event, Reagan's on four. Brian yet to score. Event two. Standing at the foot of the wall, it's Janet. She's going to be chased by Zodiac. Also getting ready to climb, it's Kathy. She's going to be chased by Jet. Contenders, you will go on my first whistle. Gladiators, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. In their heats, Kathy in pink and Janet in yellow both scored ten for reaching the top, so this is going to be quite a climb. And the Gladiators are up and at them. Jets on Kathy and Zodiac's on Janet, and Janet is struggling. Zodiac's there. Zodiac's horoscope more a horror story for Janet. And Jet's got Kathy. She's gonna give her a flying lesson. <laughs> Jet unsticks Kathy from the wall. Oh, and gets a proposal at the same time. Thanks to Jet and Zodiac, the scores remain the same. On to the men's and Wolfie's having a little chat with Regan. Right, your mum scares me more than you. I saw your mum in the audience. Yeah, can you let your wife go? Close up shots of our contenders. Well, none's more scared than you are. Wolf casting aspersion about Regan's mum, Shell. There she was in action, and I think if Wolf carries on, Regan's mum will have a lot more to say. There she started again. You have started before the game has started. No. Stop it, or you'll end also before the game has started. Regan's mum and dad in the design of T-shirts. Show us your teeth, Wolf, one of the crowd's more repeatable requests. So we now move into the men's hall with Regan. He's going to be chased by that nasty, nasty wolf man. Earlier, Brian reminded us of his less than impressive track record up the wall. Um, I've done wall um, in, in both my previous shows. <laughs> Funny old thing, I've got wall again today. Um, I've yet to make it to the top, but today I'm going to give it my all. It depends what side of the wall I get as well, but, um, and of course what gladiator is going to be chasing me. But uh, I'm going to try my dandest today to get up that wall. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it today. Third time lucky. Contenders, you will go on my first whistle. Gladiators, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one. Regan in red. This is his second climb in competition, yet to score. And as Brian in blue said, third time lucky. Here comes trouble. Wolf looking to get right up the wall and right up Regan's mum's nose. And Regan falters on the overhand. Wolfie ups and puffs and he pulls his man down. Julie giving it plenty and Brian's nearly there. Cobra's right with him. But he's done it. Ten points for Brian exactly as he predicted. And is she delighted or what? Brian, congratulations. You knew Cobra was fast. Oh, I knew he was fast. This was my third time going at the wall. Third time lucky for me. Tell me, does it matter which side of the wall you go up? Um, yeah, like the left, I just went up it, yeah. The right, I, uh, I struggled near the top, but 
the left I like, and uh, yeah, I had to move quite quick as well. Well done, 10 points. Well, Cobra, it has to be said, it was a good chase. Well, I know Brian's strength is in that he doesn't make many mistakes, and he didn't make none there, and I slipped a little bit. Fortunately for him, he got away. Unfortunately for me, he got away. Well, he did very well, and not so much for you, Regan. You didn't look very confident at all in that. No, I was always going to struggle on, on that side. I prefer the left-hand side, but that's the way it goes, isn't it? I'm not going to let it uh, bother me at all. Well, that's good to hear, because I know there was a nasty, nasty person down here trying to psych you out beforehand. You're just terrible. You're rotten. Hey, listen. I psyched him out. He was scared of me. <laughs> One person out of 14 million that was just a little bit scared. You're just you scared. Let's hear it for our lovely gladiator, Cobra, and also the Wolfman. Yeah. And let's hear it for too. Well, even a gentleman like Cobra can't teach the hound from hell any manners. After two events, Regan remains on four. Brian climbs to ten. So still to come, Polax, Pyramid and Jewel. Join us after the break here on Gladiators. two of our first semi-final, where we're just about to kick off with one of last year's favourites. And first up, it's Cathy! And she's going to be facing Nightshade! Comparing the girls' stats, Cathy O'Dell, a baker from Hull, nicknamed the Mighty Madeira, stands 5'8", weighs just over 10 stones, whereas Nightshade will be 4 inches further up the pole than Cathy, but weighs 10 pounds more. Rotate the poles. Three, two, one. Cathy will score 10 for getting to the top first. She's seen the dough rise fast, now she's got to do it herself. Cathy looking good. And Nightshade struggling, it's going away from her. Cathy strikes, presses the down button, and it's good night, Nightshade. Cathy's mum there, her uncle Kevin, he seems particularly pleased with that. The baker bails out. More used to a twisty loaf than a twisting pole. In the playback, Nightshade with half a turn from the top when she blinked and found herself at the bottom. Congratulations! That was a hard one, but you're warmed up now anyway. Oh, I don't think I do it. I did quite well. Thank you. Did quite well. Got Nightshade down. I would say that's more than quite well. Surprising, really, but surprised myself. Well done. You got yourself your ten points. Well done, Kathy. <laughs> Nightshade, were you expecting her to be quite so fast? I always expect the contenders to be very good because this is called the ultimate challenge for a very good reason. When we get to the semi-finals, we always know that we have to be on our metal or else we will be beaten. She did very, very well. Thank you. Nightshade, I've got to ask you, is that the first time you've actually gone down? I think it is the first time ever. Yes, it is, and I prefer to um, win the game and fall down under control. Thank you. Well, it is the semi-finals. Well done. Let's hear it for Nightshade. It's Janet! Janet's standing still there, something that doesn't happen very often, as she explained to me earlier. I think I've got um, a reputation of being quite fast um, in the events of the gladiators. Um, unfortunately, I'm also a bit fast in the car as well. And uh, coming back up to Birmingham, I got stopped by the police for speeding. Um, I thought I was going to get away with it. Um, because one of the police got quite excited when I said that I was going to be on um, the programme for Gladiators, but alas, um, no. So, unfortunately, I've got a few more points. Protect the poles. Well, she'll be looking to pick up points of a different sort here for speeding up the pole. Three, two, one. Shade with a good start. This more like what we're used to. 
Already half a turn in front of Janet, and Janet has never been up the pole in competition, and it shows. Nightshade climbs to the top of the trellis, hits the button, and it's come on down. Janet's mum face stunned at that, as Nightshade acknowledges the crowd. And looking at it again, Nightshade was always in control. The result was never in doubt. Well, unlucky, Janet. What happened? Well, this is one of my weakest events, so um, I'm a bit slow getting there with my little legs, but never mind. Well, I must admit, you said that you weren't looking forward to this one earlier on. Are you happy now it's out of the way? Yes, I am. I'm looking forward to the rest of the events. Great stuff. Off you go, Janet. Janet's dad in the sunglasses, dazzled by Nightshade's performance. After three events, Kathy climbs to 13, Janet stays on four. So we now move into the men's event with Regan. And he's going to be facing the Wolfman. Well, Wolf's clearly got a score to settle with Regan. And earlier, Regan told us why. In the quarterfinals, one of the big, biggest achievements was getting across on Ang Tough against Wolf. I couldn't believe it, it was brilliant. And uh, apparently, my mum were going absolutely mad trying to get over the barrier because Wolf pushed me onto the mat so after I'd beaten him. She was going mad, and my grandma ordered back. Question is, is that her own hand or grandma's? And he means business. Forget the balls! Well, certainly a lot of argy-bargy between Wolf and Regan. Who's going to win this one? It'll all be settled in the next ten seconds. Three, two, one. And it's a good start from both guys. Regan defeated Trojan on the pole in his quarterfinals, so we know he's fast, but Wolf is a man on a mission. But it's Regan! That slap on the button like a slap in the face for Wolf. Regan drops him in it. And Regan's mom delighted. In the replay, Regan is incredibly fast, almost half a turn ahead of the Wolf. And on Polak, second to the top, is first to the drop. Well done, Regan. Wow, you were fast. You were very fast. Yeah, thanks. I needed that one under my belt, yeah. And isn't it better when you beat the Wolf, man? I feel so much better now. It was great, wasn't it? Well done. Ten points. Well done, Regan. Wolf, he's done you again. Wolf. The boy was fast. Semi-finals. Hey, this is the first time I've ever done this event, and wolves are not used to heights. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'm not so sure everybody else agrees with you, but were you surprised at how fast he was? Hey, he was lucky. Well, the crowd doesn't share Wolf's opinion. <laughs> Least of all Regan's mum. Brian the lion eats wolves, but has he bitten off more than he can chew this time? Brian stands nearly six foot and weighs 14 stones, compared with the hairy one. Brian's an inch shorter and a stone lighter. And by the way, Wolf's chest measurement is the same as his age. Rotate the poles. Three, two, one. Wolf more naughty than nautical. Navy man Brian has never been at the pole in competition before. Climbing at a rate of knots. Julie with some appropriate advice. But is it enough? Wolf's there. Top of the lighthouse and Brian is scuffled. And Wolfie victorious. Some of his wolfettes there. Unlucky Brian. Deceptively quick, isn't he? He was deceptively quick, actually, yeah. Uh, the going up is, uh, is easy, but it's the coming down which scares the hell out of you. I don't think people realise just how high it is up there, Brian. It's uh, almost got a nosebleed getting to the top. Uh, my ears pop without a doubt, yeah. He was very quick. Quick move, man. Still, you're in one piece. Yeah. Well done. Let's hear for Brian! <laughs> Woo! Congratulations! Great display! Hey, I've only got one thing to say. I was lucky! <laughs> yeah! Wolf cracking a gag there, mind you, that's funnier. After three events, Regan back in front with 14, Brian stays on 10. Standing at the foot of the pyramid, it's Kathy and Janet. And tonight they're going to be facing Lightning and Zodiac. Well, before the start of the semi final, Kathy was very cagey when talking about her opponent. Uh, Jana, my opponent, I know she's quite fast. Little and nippy, very fast. 
Um, can't really say much. I'm just going to give it my best shot. That's all I'm saying. Contenders! Zodiac on Kathy, lightning on Janet. Neither contender has competed on the pyramid before. Kathy stepping up the middle. Zodiac gets a grip on the situation. Lightning strikes and earths Janet. And here comes Zodiac. First to the top, by the way, gets 10. Second gets five. Janet on the break there, climbing fast and high. Oh, what a flyer! Lightning sends it to the bottom. Zodiac on Kathy. Kathy more used to bread rolls than these. Oh, Janet go for a jog. She won't out-sprint lightning. There she goes. In this entire season of Gladiators, not one contender has reached the summit. Kathy moving to the middle. Running out of ideas to beat Zodiac. Oh, Kathy heaved down. And Janet's on the break again. Can she make it? Not if lightning's got anything to do with it. Oh, she defies her three steps from the top. Takes on a crash course and how to eat mats. Zodiac again. Oh, you've heard of a baker's dozen. This is more of a baker's dozen. What a tough stamina sapping pyramid that was. Kathy, glad it's over. She knows that when Zodiac takes you down, she takes you down in style. Wallop. Well, Kathy, it's a bit of a shame because on this occasion, of course, the gladiators really came up trumps. They were terrific, weren't they? They were indeed. And of course, even if you get a chance a couple of times, by the time you're trying the fourth or the fifth time, you're exhausted, right? Absolutely, it's very tiring. I'm out of breath. Now, you had a couple of um, what looked like quite nasty falls, but you're all right. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. You enjoy it? Yeah, it's good fun. And we did have a few attempts to get to the top, but Lightning, she was pretty quick. Yeah, she is very quick, and it's very hard to try and get these steps, very hard. Well, no points on this occasion, but let's hear it for Kathy and for Janet. Good boy. Now let's hear from the Glads. Bash is with them. Lightning, fantastic performance. It really was by both of you. Thank you very much. I think both the contenders did very well too. And I could certainly tell that this is the semi-finals. It made my job a lot harder and I'm sure it made Zodiacs too. Lightning, I've got to ask you, where do you get your strength from? I mean, Janet, she fell down, she actually got up before you and you caught her up and then threw her down again. Yeah, I think I'm quite fast at this event. Um, I really enjoy it. And when I enjoy something, I like to become quite good and quite fast at it. But um, I think it's because I'm quite springy, quite light. In fact, I'm the lightest. Um, but I do put 100% into my tackles. Thanks very much. Zodiac, well done. Thank you very much. It's one of my favorite games, this pyramid. And I, as, as Lightning said, being the semi-finals, you have to give it 100%. So I went out there to take Kathy down every single time. Thanks very much. Let's hear it for Lightning and Zodiac! The Gladiators certainly buried the contenders in that pyramid. After four events, Kathy stays on unlucky 13, Janet on four. So we now move into the men's event with Regan and Brian. And they're going to be facing Trojan and Raider. So it's Regan Raider! against Trojan and Brian against Raider. And Raider returns to Gladiators following that suspension. Here's Brian facing him up and Raider quite happy to let Brian come to him. Trojan going more for the tickle than the slap. Regan goes wide. Trojan smacks him down to the mats. No messing. Oh, but Regan's first to recover. Can he get there? No! Trojan grabs an ankle, stops him in mid-climb. Brian having a tussle with a the muscle there. Raider trying to heave him down. Oh, he's lost him. Raider lets the contender slip through his fingers. Brian like Howard Carter. The way he's opened up that pyramid. Hits the summit and fireworks. Ten points. Brian Richardson, the first contender this season to make the spark fly. And Riga's now got to fight for his five. Trojan sends it packing from the pyramid. And Brian is like a sphinx up there, screaming encouragement, trying to give him a lift. But Regan's got to use the stairs. Trojan's sticking to him like a shadow. Oh, Reagan slams against the barrier and Trojan's lost his helmet. Wrestles him down and trainer Derek Wedman steps in to break it up, but it's all over. What a pyramid that turned out to be. Incredible action and Brian, the king of all he surveys.
His son Arnold couldn't be more proud of his old dad. Looking back, that unforced error from Raider when he let Brian slip through his fingers meant that the Gladiator ate a fateful of match while the contender tasted sweet victory. Regan, I thought you'd be up there first, actually, because you did get one very good opportunity and you got hold of your foot. Yeah. You do just get one chance of that and you've got to take it. It just drains you so much. You don't get it first time, you really have no chance. I was hoping with you carrying a little bit less weight, to put it politely, you might be up there a bit quicker. Well, I did. <laughs> it worked, did it? It certainly didn't, but it worked for you, Brian. Warm congratulations, ten points. Thank you very much. And Julie Andrews, nice to meet you. Climb every mountain. I did it, did I? That was terrific. You managed to shake him off quite easily, is he? Yeah, it was uh, just a slip. I've greased myself up, especially for the event, and uh, gone through two tubs of grease, and it seemed to do the work there. Don't tell us that. It was all done. It was all fair play, wasn't it, Brian? Please well, reassure us. Of course it is. It's fair play here, and that's what it's all about. Lads play hard, very hard, but it's always very fair. Perfect. You gave them a good challenge. Let's hear it for Brian and for Regan. Ah, a kiss for Mum. Don't know why she's getting it. Dad did all the work. Raider, what happened? Well, John, I was trying a new tactic there. I was trying to get him to take the bait, go past me, hold the waist, pull him off, but, you know, he held on to me all the way. I slipped, fell, we made it to the top, all credit to the guy. And I'll tell you what, he's very pleased, because those ten points he's got are very, very valuable. Trojan, well done. Just at the end, just at the end, you pushed him there and he hit the barriers. Was he all right? Yeah, he's fine. I mean, the barriers are there to stop people going over the edge. It's, uh, as John Anson will uh, say, it's totally in the rules, but it's a good hard game. It came down the rim across the road a couple of times. Are you surprised at just how tough these guys are? Very much so. I mean, these are the semi-finals now. It's all to play for. I'm happy about that. I'm being on Pyramid. I know the Pharaohs may have built the Pyramids, but the Trojans know how to use them. Thanks very much. It's here for Trojan and the Raider! Well, Trojan always flies by the seat of his pants. Oh, and in fact, there are his pants. Well, I think you'll need those back for the next event, madam. After four events, Regan stays on 14. Brian retakes the lead with 20. Next event. <laughs> is Kathy, and she's going to be facing a falcon over to John Anderson. Kathy, as we've seen, measures 5'8 and weighs 144 pounds, so Falcon stands an inch shorter but three pounds heavier than her opponent. Side for the big fight night. Oh, Falcon, first to get stuck in. Kathy stunned into action. It's ten points for the KO, five for the draw. And Kathy has proved herself to be a durable duelist. Been the distance twice, once in her heat against Amazon and against the Falcon in her quarterfinal. And this looks to be evenly matched. Kathy keeping up a constant barrage of blows. And Falcon trying a whole catalogue of different shots but can't shift her. Kathy going for the big finish, trying to find a haymaker, but it's all over. Great battle. Five points. She worked hard and she gets down. While boyfriend Stephen there just gets worked up. Here's Kathy with Fashman. Well done, Kathy. You were playing a bit of a tactical game there. I don't think you really wanted to get her off. You were just playing for the five points there, weren't you? I like that game. It's good. I think I've got the knack of it now. Well done. Five points. Falcon heart for you. I don't think she was really trying to knock you off. She was just looking for the five points. After all, it is the semi-finals. She gave some good blows there. But, um, unfortunately, I didn't get her off. That's what I intended to do. But I tried. They're getting harder. <laughs> well done. Let's hear it for Falcon. Falcon usually sends them flying, but not tonight. And the next up is Janet. She's going to be facing a panther! And looking at the weight and oh, measures of man. both these girls, Janet Allen, 5'4", and weighing in at 130 pounds, only at a moderate disadvantage against Panther, who's two inches taller and six pounds heavier. Janet never been on a dueling platform in competition before. Oh, but getting an early taste as Panther unleashes a couple of bombs. Panther, a committed, determined gladiator. And Janet trying to match the Panther blow for blow. 
Oh, and with that footwork, looks like she's come to rumble as well as rumble. She's certainly done enough to pull the five. Oh, Janet's helmet really soaked up some punishment on that platform. Oh, Janet's gone! No, she's not! Oh, Bertha steps across! Oh, what a surprise! Ten points to Janet with just four seconds left on the clock. Janet's mum there, delirious, and Dad's still wearing his sunglasses. And here's the cat down on the mat, ready for a chat. Oh, Bertha, what a battle! What a battle! Unlucky! Just overstepped the mark. Oh, yeah, I was really going for it tonight. The cat usually gets the cream. I didn't get it tonight. You wanted her off badly as well, didn't you? I did. I went all for it and just stepped over. Darn it. It was definitely a step. It wasn't a knock. I don't think so. It all happened so fast, but we were both battling up there, and that's what you need. Let's ask Janet. Janet, well done. Congratulations. She went. Well, you know how many points you got for that? Ten. Oh, you're right. Ten points. Well done, Janet. Well done. Well done, Panda. Yes, well done to both girls. A great battle, but Panther just overcooks it and the cat makes a dog's dinner of it. Splat! Those ten points couldn't have come at a better time for Janet in the semi-final. After five events, Kathy stands on 18, Janet fights back to 14. It's the men next. And next up, it's Regan! And he's going to be facing a hunter! In both his two previous duels, Regan's lasted less than a few seconds on the platform, a six-footer weighing over 12 stones. Now compare that to the extra power the Hunter will be packing, an extra three inches and over four and a half stone. It's Hunter's hammer time. The beast is unleashed. Let's get to ready to rumble! Oh, Regan's shaken. Regan's shot. Oh, Regan's only stepped across. Oh, he shot the Hunter down with him. Hitman Hunter gets the job done and what's Regan's mum got to say about that? Not a lot. That's her boy down in a flash for a chat with Fash. Oh, Regan, unlucky. What are you thinking when you're looking at him every time he sights himself up like that? You try not to look at him, to be honest. <laughs> Hunter, again, how do you psych yourself up like that? Yeah, I've got a lot of aggression inside me, John. I like to channel it into the games. He took the first hit well, but two and three seem to just uh, do him in a little bit. <laughs> Reagan, did you think you want to stay on after the first one? Well, you never know. You just do your best. You just do your best. You don't know what's coming. Well, unlucky. Let's hit for Reagan and Hunter! It's all about the Big Bang. Ow, oh, right in my eye. Hunter, an exponent of the Big Bang Theory. And next up, the duel. It's Brian! And he's going to be facing the mighty warrior! Brian's never been on the Pugil platform before in competition. Coupled with Warrior's six-inch height advantage and a five-stone weight advantage, it's not a case of if, but when! Well, who changed places with Brian now? Flicks him off with the backhand. Warrior does the business as usual, and Brian wisely saying, blow this for a game of gladiators, I'm out of here. Saving some strength for the Eliminator. Fatch is ready for the interview, assuming Brian can still talk. Brian, frightening stuff. You're a very wise man to get off there quickly. I didn't mean to get off there quickly, it's just that the big man persuaded me to leave. I thought, I'm on my way. Did you know wh which end of the stick he was going to hit you with? No, no idea. He sort of like prodded as if he was going to come for the uh, quick jab, but then come round with a huge sledgehammer. I'm sure there's a sledgehammer inside there. <laughs> oh, it gets tougher. The Eliminator next. Warrior! Fantastic stuff. Thank you. Yeah, they're going down this year. That's very good. I'll tell you what, though, Brian was up for it up there. He was grunting and he was giving me a bit back. And that's what I like to do because it brings out the best in me as well. But you knew he was a big man. Did you really think he was going to go down? I think it was a second blow. Yeah, he's a strong guy, Brian. He's, uh, he's got a big heart. And this is what the gladiators are all about. And I tell you what, he's going to do well this year. He's going to do very well. Oh, there's a lot of stake. It's here for Warrior and Brian. Can no one defeat this dueling warrior? Oh, hello. I think she might. What a place to hide your pugil sticks. After five events in this amazing semi-final, Regan's on 14 points while Brian's on 20. Well, if you like what you've seen, join us after the break for some more exciting action here on The Gladiators! Welcome back to the National Indoor Arena here in Birmingham and to Crunch Time. Now, in the women's...
women's competition, Kathy's on 18 points and Janet's on 14 points. That's a four point difference, giving Kathy a two second head start. The very best of luck to both girls. Over to you, Fash. Thanks, Ollie. Two seconds to make up. Can you do it? I hope I can. I hope so. It's very, very tight. This is the semi finals. You're one step away. Yeah, I'm just going to go for it, do my best. Okay. Do you think you can do it? I'm going to give it my best shot. It's the third time I've done this. And every time when it comes up to it, I feel tremendous. Any part of the eliminator that you're worried about? No. No. Are you nervous? Yes. Wish both girls all the best. Janet's niece, Mercedes, enjoying her ice cream, and both girls need cool heads in this semi final eliminator. Kathy, you will go on my first whistle. Janet, you will go on my second whistle. Three. For a place in the two, grand final of Gladiators, one. Kathy O'Dell, the mighty Madeira. Oh, and she's in trouble on the high beam. She's blown it completely on the second high beam as Janet Allen storms into the lead. Janet is first to the rope. Drama in the opening seconds. And Kathy's fans in total despair. Janet, our Bristol Sports Development Officer, onto the hand ladder, followed by Kathy. Janet's got her help in there, likes what he sees. And that's his sister off the handbike, onto the rolling beams, across and onto the cargo net. And Kathy's pulled a bit back. They're almost neck and neck on the net, climbing for a place in the final. Janet climbing calmly. No, she can't afford to panic as they hit the top. Who's it going to be? It's Janet by a whisker. <laughs> Kathy's mum urging her daughter on. Janet on the zip, 25 miles an hour, knowing that the worst is still to come. Kathy behind her, splashes down. Janet on the balance beam, trying to keep her cool and to keep her balance. Kathy coming up from behind like a train, great recovery. Now it's all about the troublemaker. Here they come, dig deep, who's got the most? It's Janet, Janet Allen from Bristol, it's a finalist on Gladiators. Happy families, and here comes our heroine from Hull, Kathy O'Dell, she knows and her mum knows that, but for that high hurdle, it might have been a different story. Janet, congratulations. Fantastic stuff. First of your prize, you're going through to the finals. How do you feel now? Oh, brilliant. Oh, that was a good, that was a good game. Good. Do you actually know where you made up your time? Um, no, I don't. I don't know where. I think it was a cargo net or the beam. I think it was actually at the start. But well done. Go and see your fans and thank them for the support. This is for Janet. Through to the final. The family and the whole arena delirious. the beams at first that did you in but despite that you made for an excellent eliminator a very exciting one because you did manage to catch her up what was going through your mind keep going keep going i didn't want to stop i knew that i made the mistakes and that's all i forgot well listen it's been terrific to have you on the show will you please take this away this little gift from us to you and the very best of luck to you in the future kathy o'dell Kathy with her semi-finalist medal. Her family and friends rise to her. And on the other side of the arena, the party's already started. Brother Elkin there with a big hug. And Kathy with one for her fiance Stephen and another for Mum. Well, we're now on the threshold of the men's eliminator where Brian's earned himself a three-second head start. You've been feeling a bit nervous now. I am, yeah. But there's a lot of people come down watching me, so I'm not going to get anything less than my best shot. And Brian, I know you were thrilled to come on Gladiators in the first place. Stand a chance now of going into the final. That must excite you. Yes, it does. The prospect of uh, almost being there, I'm going to make it so as well. OK, the very best of luck to the two of you. I'll see you both at the end. Brian there, a sporting gesture to Regan, who's brought a couple of mini fans with him. Regan Pilkington from Bolton versus Brian Richardson, stationed aboard HMS Invincible. Brian, you will go on my first whistle. Regan, you will go on my second whistle. Three, two, one! Brian 
sets off. His fastest ever eliminator has been one minute six. Here comes Regan, his personal best across this course. One minute one. Brian hits the rope. His wife Julie with him. Onto the handbike, pedaling furiously. And Regan's on the bike as well. Brian, good, tidy technique. Regan less controlled and struggling with his touchdown. Brian across the rollers, onto the net. Julie expending more energy than Brian. Brian climbing the net, a strong man with stacks of stamina, as we've seen tonight, hits the top. Regan's mum can't believe it. Brian first to the zip. Hasn't put a foot wrong yet. Splashdown. Here comes Regan. All clumsy splashdown, but keeps his momentum. Brian on the balance beam with shaky. Oh, he's blown it! And Julie absolutely horrified. Can't believe it. Here comes Regan. And Mum ordering him to get up the travelator. He won't disobey her. Here he comes. Regan Pilkington swings into the grand final of Gladiators 1995. Regan's family in the yellow t-shirts going bananas. Here comes Brian. He powers his way up the travelator. Storms to the top. It's going to be through the paper first, but he knows he blew it on the balance beam. There's Brian's lad Arnold. And the wife, Julie, they can't believe what happened. Regan Pilkington, you're through to the grand final of Gladiators 1995. And that three seconds, well, yes, you must take it, you must take it. That three seconds, you know, you turn it into nothing. No, I was lucky, but you've got to have the luck because I've lost some during the games. I mean, you come off the beam and you don't normally do that, so... Yes! Will you bring all your fans back with you? Too high. They're not going anywhere. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you. That's it for Regan Pilkington. Brian, talk us through it. We saw what happened, but tell us. Well, obviously, with the lead, I felt good on the up and overs. Coming to the rope, felt good. Nice set down. You were looking very confident. Yeah. Felt good going across the handbike. Felt strong on it, across at the cargo net. Thought I'd use my noddle here and just drift across. Getting to the top, enjoy that little ride down. That's great fun. And then the beam. Obviously, I just lost my balance on the beam. And Reagan was good enough and strong enough to come right the way through and take me on it. Never mind, we lost it big time there on that beam. Yeah, it's the beam. It's, uh, it's finesse, really, isn't it? After all this power and strength, you've got to use a bit of finesse. Good man, Regan. Certainly deserves it. And have you enjoyed it? Oh, what a show. What a show. What a marvellous run. And I think chuck the bits. There's no losers at all, is there? Not in this game. You're right there. Go and thank all your supporters. Thank you very much. Well done. Let's hear it for Brian! Brian's wife, Julie, applauding the winner. Our finalist. Travel for his mum first, of course. And a hug for his grandma. And there's Brian with his greatest fan. What support Julie has given him over the past few weeks. A kiss there for little Arnold. And he'll be glad to get his sea legs back. So, Janet Allen and Regan Pilkington will go through to our grand final. Of course, you can join us next week to find out who will be joining them. That's right, on another semi-finals. Here on the Gladiators! See you then. For safety reasons, do not attempt to recreate any of the events you have seen on Gladiators. <laughs> He was a PE teacher and a deputy head. Who is he? The national treasure, Jim Bowen. He's back with Bullseye next on Challenge. And tonight at nine, it's all about quality and quantity of answers in the chase.